Hi, John from Pittsburgh. <laughs> How are you? Well, Madam Vice President, from where? California, Washington, everywhere. Nice to see you. I'm in Washington, D.C. today. Thank well, you. Well, Good to see you. It's great to see you again. Thank you for doing this with me. Look, she's so fake. Even saying hello to John from Pittsburgh was cringe. It's like her handlers propped her up in the chair and told her to read the ransom note. Like blink twice, Kamala. Kamala Harris cannot win this election without three crucial states in the Rust Belt, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, which explains why she's been going to these three states, desperately trying to convince voters to choose her. She already disrespected the Muslims big time in Michigan, and they're vowing not to support her. I want to make one thing very, very, very clear. We are going to do everything in our power to make sure Kamala Harris doesn't win. You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that, otherwise I'm speaking. Vote for, if you want Donald Trump to win, say that. I will vote for Satan if I have to. But she's also fighting an uphill battle in Pennsylvania where she's having a hard time getting men on board. All men, black men, white men, Hispanic men, all of them. That's why they're using a strategy to get the wives to flip and vote against their husbands and family to support her agenda. Yeah, that's the real reason why she's doing whatever she can to gain support in Pennsylvania because just like Wisconsin and Michigan, she will not win the election without PA. So, so basically, Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, where are they? What are their weaknesses and strengths um, here in the last month or so? Kamala Harris can't win the election without Pennsylvania. Okay. Donald Trump could, <laughs> but it'd be a lot easier if he did. It's got 19 electoral votes. It's right, a big, right. big deal. So in her latest interview, she zoomed in for a local Pittsburgh news station. It was another horrible interview where she refused to answer any questions, once again turning off voters in the middle, looking for real concrete answers, and less memorized campaign speeches. Then when fracking came up, instead of facing the question head on, Kamala ran away from her own words and tried to write it off as false. Well, Madam Vice President, I don't have to tell you how important natural gas is to this region. It's how we heat our homes and our factories in this region. It's uh, very plentiful and cheaper than oil. And we extract natural gas through fracking. So I wanted to ask you, there's a political ad on TV from a 2019 Climate Hall town meeting that you had in which you basically said, quote, there's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking, unquote. The ad claims that if you're elected president, you will ban fracking and you will cost Pennsylvania over 300,000 jobs. Have you changed your view on fracking? And if so, why? So let me start by saying that that ad, as you described it, is absolutely a mischaracterization that I think is intended to make people afraid of uh, my presidency. This lady just said reading a transcript of her own words was basically false. Mischaracterization is the word that she used, as in the act of describing a person, event, or situation incorrectly. How was saying what she said in her own words that she was for banning fracking when she was running for president last time, somehow that's now a false statement? Will you commit to implementing a federal ban on fracking your first day in office? adding the United States to the list of countries who have banned this devastating practice. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. So, yeah, and, 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 starting, and starting with what we can do on day one around public lands, right? And, um, and then there has to be legislation, but yes, and this is something I've taken on in California. I have a history of working on this issue. And to your point, um, and, you know, the, we have to just acknowledge that the residual impact of fracking is enormous in terms of the impact on the health and safety of communities. Yeah, so thank you. So would you ban offshore drilling? Yes. And I've, again, worked on that. <laughs> Back then, she said she was against fracking and had been for years. She also said she would do everything within her power on day one to address the issue as well as support any legislation that will follow up her executive actions. On top of all of that, Kamala the Cosman Chameleon said that she would ban offshore drilling. These are her own words. 
Now in 2024, she flipped and said she was a supporter of fracking, but won't explain when, why, and how she changed her mind. Just like in the CNN interview with Dana Bash, she's only repeating that her views have not changed. Well, I'm telling you, this interview was horrible and basically pointless. Gave them 10 minutes to ask her questions, only to ignore every question. The reporter had to follow up each time to try to get an answer, even with fracking. The question was, have you changed your view on fracking? And if so, why? And instead of answering the question, she started deflecting and was up there talking about people lying on her. And let me be absolutely clear, as I've been, it's when I said it back in 2020, I will not ban fracking. I did not as vice president. In fact, I cast the tie-breaking vote to open up more fracking leases. And my perspective on this is grounded in a number of things, including that we don't have to ban fracking to do the work that we can do to also invest in a clean energy economy. So that's where I stand, period. As president of the United States, I will not ban fracking. I did not as vice president of the United States. And frankly, I think some of those ads are misleading intentionally to suggest to folks that they should be afraid um, because on the other side, what you've got in my opponent is somebody who could and has not really thought, done much about lifting up the middle class. And even with the gas leases, she's lying about that too. But most Americans don't even know what she's talking about, especially her black supporters, the ones who only support her because she told them she was black. They won't even look at the research into that. So you can forget about them doing the research to understand gas leases. But I'll tell you this, the rest of the black people thinking clearly and not with emotions. The ones not drinking up the water from her bacon bathtub greens. We already know the truth about her. She's lying about the gas leases. From day one, they tried to stop leases, offering way lower contracts than both Obama and Trump. 2012 under Obama, you had 1,729 new leases. Under Trump in 2019, you had 1,841 new leases. That drastically changed under Biden. Only 407 leases in 2021 and 144 new leases in 2023. Then when you look at it in terms of acreage, I'm talking about the acreage issued for potential leasing. Under Obama in 2012, it was 1.7 million acres. Under Trump in 2019, it was 2.2 million acres. But under Biden in 2023, it wasn't even 100,000 acres. It was only 91,000 acres. We went from millions to less than 100,000. Not to mention what the Biden-Harris administration did on day one. They pulled the permit for the Keystone Pipeline. Straight up sabotaged it. Then within the first week, they banned any new oil and gas drilling on public lands and water. See, Kamala's riding on no one knowing the truth and then sending out the black boule to yell and scream at us to fall in line. All of them talking about misinformation and disinformation every second when they're the ones spreading lies, which is why no one a part of the black boule should be trusted. And they're showing that every day from Steve Harvey, Ricky Smiley and D.L. Hughley to Angela Rye, Jamel Hill and Tamika Mallory. I'm telling you, she was deflecting throughout the whole interview. It happened again when the reporter brought up the steel workers in Pennsylvania. Have made it quite clear that under your presidencies, a foreign steel company like Japan's Nippon Steel will not be allowed to purchase U.S. steel. But U.S. Steel tells us that if you block the sale and stop the promised investment from Nippon, it may shut down the blast furnaces in our area and even move its headquarters from Pittsburgh. So how will you block Nippon but keep our steel jobs right here? So let me tell you where I'm coming from. I feel very strongly that U.S. Steel needs to remain a U.S. company and that the people working there need to be American workers. The question was how will she block the sale but still keep the steel jobs right there in Pennsylvania when the company there said if it's blocked, they're going to pack up and leave Pennsylvania. Yeah, that was the original question and you heard her initial answer. She went on and on about how she loves steel workers but refused to answer the question. So the reporter had to ask her again. But if you block this foreign acquisition, how can you guarantee that there will be support? Will it come from the federal government to make sure that these furnaces stay open and the jobs are kept here in Pittsburgh? It is my priority to keep the jobs in Pittsburgh 
understanding again that the folks who are doing that work are doing hard work, good work. It is part of not only the, a tradition of American industry to do that work, but it is part of what we need to invest in the future. Yeah. Just more baby bop bimbo babble about the importance of a great American industry and traditions, but no direct answers. Kamala, how will you keep the jobs in Pennsylvania if you're trying to put in place a ban that the company already said will force them out of Pennsylvania? And see, this is why the Kamala defense team, they want to stop people from asking her questions. This is exactly why she doesn't have any answers and she's only giving the same speeches over and over and over again, trying to cast a spell over people with their own emotions. Yeah, this is why Plies and people like him said we shouldn't be questioning this so-called black woman. But to everybody who, especially the ones who, 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 who look like me, and the, the, the men who look like me, who quit the, ah, she, if Kamala want my vote, she need to explain herself to me what she gonna do for the black people. Listen, stop asking the mother black woman to explain herself to you. Yeah, well, if this woman is applying to be the top leader in the world, she's going to have to answer questions just like everyone else had to do before. And leaning on being a double minority, an Indian, and a female, that's not going to save her. Let's go ahead and get the conversation started. Let me know what you think about this below. Special thank you to Roland C. I appreciate you, Roland, for all of your support. If you want to show your support for the channel too, you have to use PayPal for now. The link is below. Ladies, fellas, want a balance analysis? Want the truth from a woman's perspective? Then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share.